Hello and welcome to Camera Review. Today we are looking at one of the lenses that has come out lately from Sigma. It is the 135mm at 1.8 and this is one of the fastest lenses that has been introduced into the market. In fact, it is the fastest 135mm lens in the market yet it is also very heavy so i wanted to compare the specs with the canon and zeiss and show you what the differences are and what sigma is bringing to the table right off the bat let me point out this is one of the heaviest lenses you will find in the market it weighs over a kilo it's at 1130 grams or 2.5 pounds that is and if you compare it to Zeiss, the Zeiss weight only weighs at 930 grams, which is two pounds. So this is half a pound lighter than the most heaviest lens that has been in the market for 135 millimeters. Now, if you were to compare this to Canon, Canon only weighs at 100, 750 grams, and that's 1.65 pounds. So you are dealing with a lot heavier lens, yet it is bringing a lot to the table. First, right off, it has a very complex structure in terms of build and design and engineering. It has 13 elements in 10 groups. And that means that this lens is going to be a very good in terms of removing distortion, removing chromatic aberration, any ghosting and comas. Yet this only adds to the weight of the lens. And as I said, Sigma produces three types of lenses and this is one of the lenses that is in the R series. R series is designed to be optically superior to the other lenses that are produced by Sigma and it is supposed to bring competition into the market and it has. We're looking at this lens and we're seeing that the nine aperture blades it has, it brings this beautiful roundish bouquet compared to, uh, to for example, Canon you have eight aperture blades which is not as beautiful in terms of the bouquet characteristics. Yet, its main competitor, I feel, is the Zeiss. Zeiss is an apochromatic uh, lens. It is, it's a lens that has been designed to reduce as much of the apochromatic aberration from the lens. It is on the same par as the Auto series. Now, there was a recent interview that I watched and I listened to it. One of the designers and engineers of the Zeiss lenses was talking about how this lens performs and he said we could have packaged this lens and put it in the auto series it would still perform just as good i totally agree on that yet the price factor is an important thing to point out the zeiss is a totally manual focus lens it costs fifteen hundred dollars that is a lot of money to pay for a lens and sigma for the first time is priced higher than canon at $1,400. So there's a $100 difference. But what you gain from Sigma is the autofocus, which is significantly important because when you get the zoom going to, uh, to 135, you're going to have a lot of issues nailing that focus and making sure that your pictures are not blurred. So for that autofocus is a key element. And also getting that bokeh in the background, Sigma delivers spectacular performance at f1.8. It is the fastest lens in the market currently. Now, you might be using Canon or you might have used Canon in the past. 135 millimeter design they have is ancient compared to what Sigma has. The old design had 10 elements in eight groups and it has eight aperture blades. So there is a lot less in the Canon design. And if you look at the weight, you'll see that there's a significant difference. Canon, however, did not think that they needed to improve upon this lens. That is why Zeiss, of course, had taken over in terms of performance. Now Sigma is stepping in and they're delivering as spectacular performance as almost Zeiss. Now, if you compare the MTF charts, you'll see that it is almost on par with Zeiss, yet outbeats everything that Canon has output. So it is going to destroy the market in terms of quality. If you're a professional, a wedding photographer, for example, you would want to use a lens like this because first of all, you're gonna get the added advantage of using it in low light. More importantly, you're going to get a much better optical performance. So that is a key issue. Another key issue to point out is that in the past, 
uh, Sigma lenses had issues with autofocus and build quality. Now their lenses outperform most of the lenses in the market because their lenses have better motors now. That means the autofocus is a lot faster. In fact, it has been rated at to be 1.3 times faster than the older lenses. So they're hypersonic. Their coatings are incredible because they have been able to remove much of the chromatic aberration and distortion from the lenses. Now, comparing to side by side to Canon, of course, you might say there is a big price difference. Yes, there is because Canon costs about a thousand dollars and Sigma costs fourteen hundred dollars. So for that fourteen hundred dollar difference, you're getting a lot more optical quality. You're getting a be much better design and you are getting a much more advanced lens. However, that $400 difference is going to be a significant factor for some people, but for professionals, I think they will say, I will buy the better lens, I will buy the lens that performs more for my work because that is the key element when you're using a lens at 135 millimeters. It's a great portraiture lens, and if you are used to using 85 millimeter and you wanna to go to longer lengths, this is one of the lenses to consider. Now, if you look at the build quality, the quality that Sigma delivers has the thermal stable composite material. So this is a new type of technology. It is one that delivers spectacular quality in terms of uh, uh, protecting the glass elements from dust and splash proof. So it is a good lens, it's well built. Now, one of the things that you might want to take notice of is the fact that it, it's compatible with the USB port that comes to, uh, to put new uh, software into this lens. So you can upgrade your lens as the time moves. So it can be upgraded to work with new cameras that are coming out. It can be taken to a Sigma dealer and they will uh, calibrate your lens to your camera and make it sure that you have the finest adjustments. Now, this is not available with Canon and it is not available with Zeiss. But one thing important to point out, as much as the Zeiss delivers great spectacular technology and has an incredible design, it is still a manual, manual lens. And if you're gonna use it at F2, you're gonna have a hard time nailing that focus. You're gonna need a tripod and you probably need to use it in circumstances where the subject is stationary. Now, if you're doing wedding photography, you're probably going to want to have a lens that's autofocus, and this lens is the one that delivers. Now, a lot of people go with zoom lenses, but for portraiture, 135 millimeters is beautiful because it blurs out the background much better than the 85 millimeters or the 50 millimeters. So some photographers prefer to use the lo longer focal lengths for their work. And I personally think that if you're gonna use this lens, make sure that you get the lens that performs optically better than anything else in the market. So Sigma delivers the performance and I advise you to check out the other videos that I've made on Sigma lenses. Also, I will be doing side-by-side -side comparison of this lens with Canon and Nikon and show you how they differ in quality and image. And also we will look into this lenses performance with other lenses in the market that will be coming out in the recent announcements I heard there's gonna be new lenses coming out from Zeiss. So we're gonna put them side by side and compare them. And of course, if you like this review, please the, press the like button and subscribe to our channel. And you can visit our website at camerareview.ca to see our latest updates and uh, see if you can get discounts and offers if you subscribe to our newsletter. And I thank you for watching.